here. Brethren, I'm Brian Chewitt of Anita and the Men. We thank you for joining us on this fine Monday morning here as we bring the living word of God to your truth, your time. Our morning side communication network, MC and Ministries, right here in Los Angeles, California, 501c3 Certified Church here in the United States. We thank you for all in all that comes into us, all in all, and the love and the truth, and love all that does come into us. For the masterless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we're, we're going to be going into Mark chapter 10 today. We're going to be speaking of Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, and the power of the healing. And as we go into this, let's get a clean sheet of notebook paper and let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, the endless realm of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow, where many called a few are chosen. We thank you for loving truth. The truth sets us all free to bring this to this this to our new day. Choices are not predestined, but your love is, O oh God, by thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We bring this time, your love, your loving truth, as we lift up our prayers, as we lift up our, our repentance, we thank you for giving us the knowledge and the power to, to forgive all those around us who trespass against us, so you can pour your new mercy upon us every day. We lift up the strength and the unity of the Holy Spirit, of one mind and one judgment of Christ. We lift up all in the moments of this time, forevermore. We come into this time, we come into this glory, as a crying to the Lord, we want to know ever so every day, every day, as you, as you bless us with your wisdom and discernment every day, and the power of the love, power of the power of Jesus, in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, Amen. Brethren, blessings to you, as you share in the gospel of peace, the gospel of God's love, His truth just sets us all free. We lift up the cup of wisdom, cries unto you, as we go forward, in His name. As we continue in our studies of Mark that has been prominently on going on uh, on Sundays that going, we're going to be bringing this bringing this through our weekly services now that now that we finished John and now that we finished uh, Galatians 5 22-23 um, Jesus and his disciples are making the way towards Jerusalem as we see Mark Chapter 10, verse 32. Let's, uh, now they were on the road going to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going before them. And they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. Then he said, he took the twelve aside and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. And we we came to the late to the last healing miracle described in the Gospel of Mark. Verse 46 through 52. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to, to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good share, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbioni, that I may see my that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you heal. And immediately received his sight, and he followed Jesus on the road. This demonstrates the healing power of faith, the healing power of the living word of God. It involves the healing of a blind man wearing near, near the city of Jericho, identified by name as Bartimaeus, whose persistent faith and gratitude can serve as an example for us today. For us today. We go into the city itself. Mark re reports that the miracle occurred on the way out of Jericho. Luke says it occurred on the way to Jericho. But there were two Jerichos at the time of Jesus, about 50 miles northeast of Jerusalem. The old Jericho came from the days of Joshua, 
most, was mostly abandoned. The new Jericho built by Herod the Great was an attractive city. And maybe the miracle occurred as Jesus was leaving one and heading to another. It included Jesus' disciples and a great multitude. And the blind man himself, Bartimaeus, Matthew reveals that the city was actually were actually two blind men. Matthew chapter 20, 29 to 32. We say to you, O Lord, now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Have mercy on me, O son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord of David. And Jesus stood and called them out and said, What do you want me to do for you? And they were healed. In our time, brothers and sisters, we have so many choices presented to us that it, it can be very overwhelming. Matthew 7, chapter 7 through, verses 7 through 11, you hear me say this quite often. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if, if his son asks him for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks him for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Jesus warns that the unforgiveness in man's heart may hinder one from healing. We don't want any hindrance of our healing. Let's go into Mark chapter 11, 23 through 26. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in your prayer, believe that you do and have received it. And it will be given, and it will be yours. And, we'll, and whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Jesus reminds his disciples that the gift of healing was given to the apostles as a sign to the unbeliever. Our prayers for healing will show unbelievers that our God is a healer even today. We must be examples to each other. We must feel, feel all in all that we can share the truth of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can share an inheritance that Christ wants us all to give to each other. Jesus knew. Jesus had more tribulations before he got to Gethsemane. People don't realize that. Let's go into Matthew chapter 20, 17 through 19. Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples and aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and, and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scrooge. Brothers and sisters, we share this power. We share knowledge we share in the aspiration of the truth, the truth to set us all free. We share in this time frame, brothers and sisters, we share in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. By his truth we are healed. By, by we are healed. Luke focuses his account on Bartimaeus. Mark is also identifying him by name. Bartimaeus sat by the road begging, begging, begging did not realize that as the presence of Jesus came upon him, his faith came out of him. The miracle, the, the plea, the desperate plea from Bartimaeus that birthed, birthed his faith into hunger. Hunger, coming the other half way to God. And God coming the other half. That is what we all must use, all must have as Bartimaeus as an example of hunger for God. Learning that Jesus of Nazareth was walking by, Bartimaeus began to cry out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sought to silence him, but he cried 
out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. The gracious healing. Jesus commanded for Bartimaeus to be cold. Some encourage him. Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. Mark chapter 10 verse 49. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be cold. Then they called the blind man saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. Be thrown aside. He, th he threw aside his outer garment, which, which might hinder his step and comes to Jesus. And Jesus, of course, asked him, well, what, would you, what would you want me to do? That I may receive sight. In John chapter 20, verse 16. Then he said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabioni, which is to say, Teacher. The beautiful depth when we say someone's name, the depth of that love, the depth of saying Anita, or how she says Bryant, how a certain expression comes to us, whether it's Kathy or bringing into a certain envelope of truth. God gives us an envelope. How we carry it, how we distribute it, that's our choices. But we sing into that new song, the new task that God is giving to all of us. The new moment of the truth, how the truth just set us all free. How the truth brings us to the deliverance of God's love, God's truth. The truth just set us all free. The truth is giving us that time. That God, the truth is giving us the knowledge of the fruitfulness of what we do have. Brothers and sisters, in John chapter Fifteen, verse seven. Jesus promises that we, uh, when we maintain our relationship with Him, and we remember that He is the one who heals, He will do it. If you abide in Me and My words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. John fifteen seven doesn't mean it'll be done at the moment because you have still have to show your hunger. Jesus was speaking in his in his sermon on the mount when He gave the guidelines for how we should pray. Here is what he said to the disciples as he taught them this particular prayer. And when you pray, Matthew 6, 5-8, you must be not like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may, seem, may, may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. I pray to your Father who was in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you. When you pray, do not heap up empty phases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows when you need before you ask Him. Prayer is answered in heaven. Prayer is answered. It comes from the throne room of God. We sing to you, O God, the truth, how the truth does set us all free, how the truth brings us to your power, to your love. How does this all begin? How does this all bring us to the knowledge of the truth? The truth does set us all free. Romans 10.13 sings loud to you, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Brethren, that's you, whosoever. That's the power of your love. That's the power of the truth. That's the power of the now. This, if you want to be redeemed, you want to experience a new life, walk away from the yoke of sin now and turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Come into this knowledge. Come into this moment as we share, brothers and sisters, that new life for you. Repeat this after me for those who want to be recommitted with the gold, those to be turned over to Christ right now. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. 
Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for bringing me forward. I am praising your name before the throne of God. The angels of heaven are right before the throne of God, mentioning your name and praising your name forevermore. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we love you, Jesus. We love you. Hallelujah for bringing us forth. For Jesus, you are coming back faithful and true. You are coming back and you are changing some boldness into your creation. The potters will represent the experiences of your mortalness and brought us into what we have today, the now. We have to be baptized by the water and the spirit. We have to walk in God's love. We are to go into this time frame forevermore. Into this time, into this love, into this truth. In Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, this time, our endless rhyme comes into this right now. We must be persistent of our of our commands for healing. Our faith will be getting ever so stronger as we die daily, crucified daily, by the measurement of our faith with with God and for God and our gratitude. The people who saw this miracle also praised God. In Luke chapter 18 verse 43 And immediately he received his sight and followed him glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praise to God. Give praise to God when you are healed even if it's from common cold. You wake up every day, you can move your fingers, your limbs, your toes, you can walk around, make yourself a cup of tea, coffee, breakfast for your wife. How might we best praise God for such a miracle? Perhaps by learning from the example of blind Bartimaeus. The persistence. Bartimaeus displayed persistence despite the efforts of others to silence him. He exemplifies the truth of what Jesus taught about persistence. Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For, for everyone who asks receiving, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. I, are we willing to be persistent in our prayers? Can we do this, brothers and sisters? Can we persistent with our growth, <laughs> with our love, with our truth, and how the truth sets us all free? Luke chapter eighteen. Let's go through 1 through 8, please. The parable of the woman and the judge. Then he spoke a parable of them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God, nor regard a man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said to her within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard a man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him? Though he bears long with them, I tell you, that he will come avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he really find faith on earth. And that word, nevertheless, I'm reminded by the stories of David. When he was smart, hey, what you come to Jerusalem for? To beat up the blind, the maimed, the weak? His enemy said that to him. And that says in the next scripture, nevertheless, David took over the stronghold of Zion. It's time for you to take over your stronghold. It's time for you to demonstrate a stronger depth of your faith. Bartimaeus was healed because of his faith, not because he went to some witch doctor or street corner. He went to the man himself, Jesus Christ. He was persistent. Similar to the woman who healed of a flow of blood. Mark chapter 5, verse 34. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Do we know... Do we have the faith to receive what is God's will for us? First chapter 5, verse 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, 
he hears us. Now, hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. We show your gratitude by joining us as much as you can on our broadcast seven days a week, right here live over YouTube, Ustream. We're sharing the glory of, of this time. We're sharing the glory of His truth. The truth just sets us all free. But I may follow Jesus and glorify God. Like the Samaritan leper, he expressed gratitude. Do we express gratitude for the many blessings that God gives us? Luke chapter 17. Let's start with verse 12. And then, as he entered a certain village, there he met ten men who were lepers, who stood far off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. So it was it that, that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, which saw that they were sealed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and he fell down on his face, his feet giving thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But there were, but where are the, the nine? But where are the nine? Were, they, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Brothers and sisters, by our faith we come to you with your gratitude. We cannot do this alone. We go into the unchurched nations every day with these broadcasts. My beautiful wife, Anita, Let's say it's on the injured reserve list after going through some surgery and some illness, but she's doing quite well. She'll be joining us once again in two weeks. Brothers and sisters, we are asking you and inviting you to become a financial partner to our ministry. As you plant your seed into this ministry, you'll realize from the power of the scriptures that your harvest is now. Back up your seed, financial seed into this ministry with your ob obedience of your prayers, your obedience of getting to the living word of God, your obedience getting to Bible studies and Sunday services or the fellowship of the saints. Brothers and sisters, we thank you and give praise to you. We thank you and give, give the acknowledgement of the truth for you. We, we, we give thanks to you, O oh brethren, that as you plant your financial seed into this ministry, the windows of heaven will open up before you and the blessings will pour down upon you that you have no room to store them and any of your storehouses, your apartments, your barns, anything. So we express the gratitude for the many blessings God gives us. We thank you for prayers and support ahead of time. And do stay up to date with all of our news and information at BrianTewitt.com. And right there, at the bottom left corner, you can make a donation there. Or send us right through our contact link, a check through mail, again. Our full name is Morningstar Communications Network, or MCM Ministries, and we are 501c3 Certified Church here in the United States. Let's go to first, right, or jot down, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faith-hearted, faith upon the weak, be patient with all. The conclusion, brothers and sisters, is that the conclusion of your life but the growth of the everlasting love of Jesus. Bartimaeus, who, who sought to si many sought to silence, has much to teach us about persistence, faith, and gratitude. May the healing of the blind Bartimaeus serve us, serve to always remind us to persist in our request to God, to develop the faith necessary to receive such request. Never fail to express gratitude when God answers our prayers. Are you willing to show your gratitude to Jesus by following him as a disciple, by being a financial partner to this ministry, responding to the gospel of Christ? Matthew chapter 28. Let's go to 18 through 20. And Jesus said and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you to do. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Even to the end of age. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for the blessings that you brought to each and every one of us. Jesus says to all of us in Matthew, Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, 
through Jesus. Thank you, O Lord. And he said to them, Go to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned will be condemned. And behold, in Matthew chapter 9, 20, 22, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up from behind and touched the fringe of his garment, and he said to her, If I only touch his garment, I will be healed. And Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. Luke chapter 17. 11 through 19. And on the way he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and he entered a village where he had met ten lepers. He stood at a distance, lifted up the voices, saying, Jesus, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they reclined the one of them when he saw it, that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on the ground, face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, "We're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner?" And he said to them, "Rise, go your way. Your faith has made you heal." I'd say that scripture again. By the importance of hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. By bringing this moment to your healing, to your touch, to your truth, to the truth that brings us all of one mind and one judgment of Christ. For in the master's name of Jesus, for the truth of the Lord, O God, on this new day, we lift up the rays of the praise, O God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, the endless time of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow. Many called of you are chosen. We lift up all the rays of praise to you, O God. We lift up the thanks and the blessings for you, O God. We sing unto you. Dear Lord, we, give, we thank you for the strength to lift up our repentance and our prayers to forgive those around us as in everyone. As you lift up our prayers and forgiveness, you pour down your numerous upon us every day. You give us the strength to cry unto you, O oh Lord, we want to know ever some more every day better than we knew yesterday. And then to pour down all the wisdom and discernment upon us. We thank you for the financial stewardship of, of our financial partners into this ministry, giving us the strength to lift up the raise of praise of our offering to this ministry. We give you thanks for healing throughout my wife's body and her limbs. We lift up all thanks in law and love. For the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this morning. And good afternoon in your part of the world overseas. We thank you for your time. Until next time, on behalf of Anita Hewitt and yours truly, Brian Hewitt, the man, do stay up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades coming to your part of the world at BrianHewitt.com. BrianHewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day for the people.